It was a happy birthday for me. We had 19 sales yesterday for nearly a thousand dollars in gross sales. Let's talk about it. Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Mel and this is my tired birthday boy husband, Adeen. We're both tired. Our kid has not been sleeping well, so this is what this, this is what, what we're get. working with. <laughs> Take a good look at it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I partied hard last night. It was my birthday yesterday. I watched a full James Bond movie and one half of another one. What? I know. Was I was sleeping. Pretty hardcore. Mona was passed out. <laughs> I was just laying there in bed eating pumpkin pie mm -hmm. and watching James Bond movies. Yes, and then Jessica wanted to party. That must have been it. She yeah. loved you. Yeah, Jessica was like, I like to party too. That was at like one o'clock in the morning. So we're both a bit tired. We both have headaches. It's all right. Uh, our resale business has been on fire the last like I don't have a headache. Two weeks. Oh, you don't? I Never just mind. Want to clarify. All right. I have a headache. <laughs> uh, it's been on fire. We want to talk about mm -hmm. that. Uh, we are going to answer a couple of questions off of the YouTube comments because they're excellent questions and we want to give our perspective. Mm -hmm. We'll share some killer sales and tell you what's working for us and yeah. what's not working for us today. Also, of course, because of all the inventory that we have, Mondo went thrifting <laughs> and brought back two bags of shoes, uh, which is awesome. We Talk love flipping it. shoes. And uh, actually one of the questions is related to shoes, so that's a really good point. This question comes from Thrifty Navy Mom. She asks, with the growth you are experiencing, are you still washing and cleaning shoes? I feel like shoes are great bread and butter items to have, but they are getting time consuming. Thanks for any advice. That is a really great question because shoes can be time consuming. When we have to clean in batches, I've counted about six to seven minutes per pair of shoe for cleaning. If you're cleaning a hundred shoes to set you up for the week, that is a lot of time sunk into doing that. We have been very fortunate that the bulk amount of shoes we have been picking up are very minimal work. Like you said, shoes are a very bread and butter item. The return that we get on them with the prices at our thrift stores is very strong. So we would still do it, but you would want to factor probably in a day for doing that. What works really well for us when we do have to clean a lot or there's some heavy duty dirt that needs to be gunked out. One of us will set aside almost a half or full day just to concentrate on shoes. But that does allow us to take a lot of photos at once and then we have a lot of shoe photos on our phone. So we only have to do that cleaning process maybe once a week if that. If you are getting a lot of other good inventory, maybe just try to pick up shoes that aren't going to require a lot of time to clean them. There's plenty of those options out there and that's one way you can minimize your uh, production costs. Thank you for the question, that's a really good one. We are on the road to 25,000 subscribers, which is pretty crazy. Thank you guys who have already subscribed. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button down below. It's free to you and it just simply makes our channel more accessible to new viewers and it helps us grow our audience and reach more people where we can share our journey and hopefully help people along the way. Also, there's a bell down below. You can click on that. It notifies you when we put out new content. We will be uploading and live premiering three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the chat. Before we show you guys some of the best sales from yesterday, I wanted to just take a moment and thank April. Uh, first, thank you so much for all your support. You're always in our live streams, chatting it up with us. We truly appreciate you. Also, thank you so much for your business. April reached out and she inquired uh, about all three of those quilts that we picked up from Jay's store buyout. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. Uh, we picked up over $2,000 worth of inventory. These quilts came from there. It's over 10 pounds. Um, they're going to you. They'll be shipped today, USPS priority, so you should have them in about three days. So thank you again. I'm going to cover five sales from yesterday that are hard goods that are really good. Just wanted to share these with you in case you run into them at garage sales, estate sales, wherever. Definitely pick these ones up. They have a lot of value to them. First two are golf clubs. We don't sell a lot of golf clubs because we usually don't find them in our area. Both of these came from Jay's store that we bought out. The first one was this driver. It's the TaylorMade R580XD. It's a right-handed driver. Driver meaning this is the one that you know you blast the ball off with if you can. What I did here 
is include as much as possible in our title. So if you can see the title here, I basically just copied everything I could get from either the shaft or the head itself. And then my cover shot was the actual head. And I think this helped it in the search metrics. So it was easy for people to find it. And then also it was priced competitively with free shipping. Plus the first photo was of the actual head, which is the most important part of this golf club. It sold for 40 shipped. It will cost about nine bucks to ship it. It just goes in a long tube from USPS. I don't have any, so I'm gonna have to splice two smaller tubes together. I shipped one out yesterday and it was like 874 or something like that. The second one was this Nike Sasquatch. I read a little bit about this and apparently it's illegal to use them because uh, whatever, golf rules. It did have this dent in it, as you can see. It did affect the price a bit. It only sold for 50 shipped. I saw comps anywhere from 70 to 90 ships, so I definitely lowered the price on it because of the damage, and I disclosed it, you can see in the title, it's written that it has a dented head, and I also put it in the description. I don't think it'll really change much uh, of the dynamics, because the face of the head is still pretty good, and again, I just copied all the information from the head, put them in the title, and it sold within a day and a half. Up next is this cupcake cookie jar it's actually from walmart it still has the walmart tag on the bottom we got it at a garage sale for six dollars and it sold for 49 dollars on an offer with free shipping it'll probably cost about 15 bucks to ship it because it it's going to be bigger than this right after we put some padding on it and carefully bubble wrap it we don't like selling a lot of ceramic stuff but when we find a great deal where we can make a decent net profit we'll definitely pick it up the cost of goods actually might have been lower than six bucks because we got it at uh this really like junk sale up north so if we have six bucks on the records it might have been a little bit lower look out for unique pieces if you don't mind putting in the work to bubble wrap and package ceramic items it can be a really good flip my favorite sale that uh, Melinda turned around uh, last night and looked at me and said, did you see the Jurassic Park game sold? This thing sold for $85. It's for the original Xbox, which is the first Xbox released. And we had no idea that it had any value. This came in a bunch of video games that we picked up for a buck each. Now we definitely know to look out for it because it has some sort of cult following. And on my phone, you can see I describe the game of course the title and i put in the year it was made and that it's completed cib meaning complete inbox and that it's tested we do test all of our video games that we sell it'll cost about four dollars to ship it and complete meaning it has the game and it has the actual manual in it collectors like that a lot and you know general gamers like it if it's missing the manual it might drop the price just a little bit overall it was excellent condition and this last one uh, is just a replacement for a Krups Espresso coffee machine maker. These are really hard to come by and they don't make them anymore. So anytime you see older machines, definitely take a look and see if the parts have any value. This is already the second part that sold. The other one was the small Espresso Carafe. I think that's how you say it. That one sold for 22 and this thing sold for 40 bucks shipped. It'll cost about $12 to ship it. And again, take a look at my title. I describe exactly what it is with the best search keywords that I could. Clear, nice front photo with detailed photos following it. It sold within a week. This giant pile of clothing sold. I won't cover all of it, but I will pick five pieces and we'll talk about them. First piece I'm going to talk about are these Brooks. Brooks is a great uh, running shoe brand to look out for especially if they're in really good condition, which I would consider these very good because there's no areas of major wear on the tread. That's definitely something to look for. And then the fabric here, there's no rips or tears or anything like that. So this was a great pickup. We paid about $6 for this at our thrift and they sold on Posh for $38. We went back and forth a few times with offers and on Posh, they pay shipping. So that's a good profit margin for us. This is another Posh sale, but it was a bundle, and it was a full price bundle sale, meaning they put these together in a bundle and then didn't make an offer. They just paid the full price that was listed. Now we do have it set up on Posh where if somebody makes a bundle of at least two items, it's automatically 10% off. So if we're making offers off that, it would be even more than 10% of a discount. 
These are a pair of Keen sandals. This is a classic Keen style. Look out for them at your local thrift. They do not sit long for us. And this was a great size, size eight. And then a pair of silver jeans. These are the Suki Fluid, and these are from J Store. So that was a nice little bundle together. Out the door for $67.50 for both of those pieces. This next pair of jeans was also a J Store purchase. They're these rust color. They're, they just say Boss jeans, so I don't believe that they are Hugo Boss. Just Boss is the name. That 90s vintage wide leg style that's very in right now those sold for 45 dollars on ebay and it only took a couple days we did have an offer of 30 dollars on these which we countered with 40 and then somebody paid our full price of 45 before that person could decide if that was a good enough offer for them if these hadn't been damaged if they had had all the loops these can sell for over a hundred dollars on ebay so somebody definitely got a great deal and so did we somebody paid full price $65 on eBay and they are made in USA. One more posh sale before we move on. It is a Bowden dress and I'll grab the logo for you here. I really like finding Bowden dresses. Those specifically sell really quickly and for a good value. This was a $33 sale on posh and they pay shipping. While I was thrifting this morning, I made a quick stop at our very close local thrift store. And while I was in line, I was behind somebody who had items just falling out of the car. And I just asked her if I could help because she was clearly struggling and she was clearly a reseller. So I asked if she had an Instagram handle. She did, her name is Jen. So if you made your way to our YouTube and you're watching us, it was very great running into you. Very nice woman. Her car was full of Bowdoin dresses. Someone had clearly just cleared out their whole closet. She also had a bunch of shoes and a lot of athleta. So awesome haul on her part. If you see either of those two brands, they do hold a good resale value. But for Bowdoin specifically, I find that the dresses move quickly. The other question comes from Michael Grossman. He writes, how do you know which selling platform you should sell on? Or is there a system that lists all of the same items on various platforms all at once? Thanks in advance for any help on this regard. That's a really good question, Michael. Thank you so much for taking the time to write us and to ask that question. I wanted to elaborate on this just a little bit. You will see a video coming up in a very near future about uh, us advertising for Mercari. That's one of the platforms that we sell on. We definitely sell on eBay, Poshmark, and Facebook Marketplace. What I would recommend is that you taste all of the platforms and you work with the ones that you really enjoy. So if you hate listing on eBay because of all the item specifics, because of the, the metrics, because of the traffic, return policies, whatever, don't listen to us tell you if eBay is good or bad. Try it yourself, but try it honestly and really put in an effort. Same goes for Poshmark, Mercari, and Depop, and Etsy, and Facebook and all of those platforms try and figure out yourself so take you know one item and list it on all of them for X amount of time right three months six months and see which ones you like dealing with which ones you don't what works for us we sell everything on eBay then we cross post all of our shoes clothes and accessories on Poshmark accessories meaning like hats and uh, purses headbands things like that we cross post primarily shoes and some electronics on Facebook Marketplace and some collectibles primarily. You know, that seems to be a good market for that type of stuff on Facebook Marketplace. And then on Mercari, we cross post primarily things that are smaller. So shoes, clothes, accessories, things like that. Almost the same principle as Poshmark. Now, the pros and cons on all of these, again, you're going to have to figure that out for yourself and see which ones you like working with. As far as any services that we currently use for listing, cross-listing, or listing for us, we don't use any of them. We believe that we're still brand new to this reseller business, right? We've been at it for roughly two years. Yeah, two years. Two years and some change. We're still new. We're still learning. So for us to have somebody else do it for us, we thought about it. We tried some services, but right now we want to focus on us doing it so that in the future when we start hiring more employees we can teach them the proper way of doing it 
There are a lot of services out there. Hammock is one of them. List Perfectly is another one. I would definitely consult with some people that are using those services and pick their brains on pros and cons. Unfortunately, we can't really answer that question at this point in time. When we do use a service, we will definitely talk about it, but we're not going to promote any of them that we currently don't use or don't know much about. Thanks again for the question. I hope that helps. Amongst the stuff that sold yesterday, we do have some of the stuff that we packed up uh, earlier from yesterday's sales. We just couldn't make it in time. Yesterday was just super hectic. We're going to get all this stuff out of here. There's just pounds and pounds of clothing, which we're grateful for all of these sales. One of these uh, pieces right here also sold on Poshmark is this Tourmaster jacket. This was from another store buyout from um, a few videos ago. This one, uh, I just wanted to mention because we went back and forth on the price. They, I'll pop it up on the screen, but I was firm at 40 and that's what it sold for. It only sat for about a week, which is great. Definitely look out for motorcycle riding type jackets. They're very expensive, brand new, and if you can find them in great condition, you can make a great amount of money flipping them. This is where I make my shameless plug that if you're tired of selling on eBay, shipping got you down, don't have enough time with the fam, let us buy you out. If you're local to the area, we pay cash. This is, reminds me of those uh, <laughs> cash lending. You know that guy like takes his head out of his uh, window. I need cash now. <laughs> Sell us your things. We're always buying. So folks, sincerely, if you're interested, uh, reach out to us. I'll put my email down below. If you have inventory and you, won't, you don't want to move it anymore, or you're just tired of reselling, we love reselling. So send it to us. We'll pay cash. We're getting everything packed up. It's 4.30. We literally have a two-minute drive in each direction, and Nadine's freaking out. He's freaking out, man. I am freaking out. I want to get this stuff out of my house. Um, one day when we move into a space, I'm going to have a workstation where I don't have to bend over like this to print a label, which is pretty exciting. This is the reason why Linda does all the label printing. Oh, like, I didn't know that's why I did it. and full the way we like it it'll fit for you guys who are always commenting that we need a bigger car why look at this perfection i mean it's a struggle every time but you know it's fine off to the post to go Woo! We are very fortunate that UPS and USPS are super close by, so we can make it in a nick of time. It's 4.45. Plenty of time. We've Plenty of time. Before. We've done this <laughs> for some reason. Not numerous times. More times than we should probably tell people. It's a struggle uh, on some days. Like like I said, I was partying pretty late last night, so we had a late start to the day. Melinda was out grocery shopping, thrifting, and dropping Jessica off, so that's okay stuff happens i did find out uh, i actually learned this from utah bought and gone a while ago but if you can pre-print your fedex labels you can drop them off at walgreens i confirmed that yesterday and it actually saved a bunch of time because that ended up being closer than a different fedex we saved nine dollars on a package thanks zach and if you want to check out utah bought and gone i'll link his channel down below He's a full-timer as well. He also loves investing and has a rental property already at a very young age. Super good dude. Go check him out. Tell him Hustle & Hooks sent you. We made it in the nick of time. We pulled in at 4.55. But I will say our post ladies here are amazing. They are so nice to us. They know who we are. And actually the other day we misprinted or misweighed something. So it was postage due of 7.50. And this sweet woman, her name is Allie, sent it on and she fronted the cost for us. So that was just so nice because she said, I know you guys, you come in here, I didn't want your buyer to get it and be upset or have it come back. So that was really nice. So we gave her $20 and a card and said lunch is on us because that was just like, that was just a really nice thing for her to do and she didn't have to do that. 
always be nice to your carriers. They work really hard for us under a very stressed system. So we love them. We're probably going to make them some like baked goods or something for the holidays. If you take good care of them, they will obviously, as you can see, take good care of you. I think we're also going to throw them some cash for sure because they work, uh, like Melinda said, they, they work their tails off, especially during the Christmas season where the lines are always through the door. Anyways, back to the homestead. We wanted to take a moment and just talk a little bit about what's working for us right now and what you could do to hopefully help increase your sales and your revenue through your e-commerce business. Yeah, as we mentioned, we had a crazy sales day today, but we've had some crazy sales days back to back now for a while and some strong mm -hmm. weekends. Now, part of that probably is because it's quarter four. That is normal for an uptick in sales, but you still have to have things that people want to buy. You don't magically just start selling everything in your store just because you have one and it's quarter four. You do need to pay attention to what you're sourcing. The pickier you are, the faster you are going to get those up and the faster they will sell, making room for new inventory. So that's number one. Number two, I mean, just look at the sell-through rate on items that you're picking up, right? So if you look something up, let's say Tommy Bahamas, um, silk, short sleeve, button up shirt, just type in Tommy Bahama silk shirt as a rough search. See how many are for sale pre-owned. Go over to the filter and see how many are actually sold. And let's say it's a thousand that are available and only 42 sold in the last 90 days. Don't pick it up because it's gonna take forever to sell that item. So just be really picky like Mona said. Look for items that have a good sell through rate that are going to sell fast so you can get your initial investment back, make your profit and reinvest it into more inventory. We made a video about sell through rate and how it really just helped us be really good resellers right from the jump and we'll link that below. The other thing that's working for us right now is that we're being very consistent and we're working our arses off every single day. Like it's been hectic. You can probably see some bags under my eyes or, or Mona's <laughs> eyes. And it's not like we're unhappy and like we hate mm -hmm. doing it and we're staying up all night. It's just, no, we work anything, a lot. No, if anything, I would say like these sales days motivate me. Like, yes, I am so dead tired at the end of the day and I'm listing while trying to get some, you know, me time in, whatever. I don't mind doing that, especially right now. We will have time to relax later. You know, there's always January, February when you get a little bit of a breather. And then of course, you know, once we get more employees working, I'll get more breather time then. So I would just rather push and push now and go hard and make it worth it. Yeah, we've said it before, this is when, when you're gonna make the most amount of money. So put in all of your effort that you can if you, you know, take that half hour where you watch a TV show and stop, mm -hmm. take that half hour that maybe, you know, wake up a little, a little bit earlier. There's so many things that people do to waste their time. Just try to reduce that and, and reinvest that time into yourself, into your future. Or just try to rework it. Like you don't necessarily have to not watch your show. What I will do is play something that I want to watch and then list yeah. to that show. I mean, it's not 100% attention on the show, but it's a good compromise. Don't compare yourself to us also. That's something I wanted to bring up, you know, unless you're doing exactly what we're doing. So primarily, at least in the last month, I've been working daily on the business and Melinda watches Jessica twice a week. So Melinda isn't, you know, technically full time every single day, although she works in a business every single day. But whoa. Cool, uh, my, light grill, my grill lights are on a timer. <laughs> oh, perfect. That's why I was growing. Ah, so, yeah. That's what it is. Uh, when she's not with Jessica, she's listing or packing or revising listings. We also have an employee that helps us knock out huge amounts of listings right off the bat. So we get, you know, 20, 30 pairs of shoes photographed, 20, 30, 40 pairs of jeans, whatever it may be. Right. So we can load up our phones and list and we're listing every single day throughout the day. So we list morning, midday, evening, all day, every day, even the weekends, we're putting up five, 10, 15 items if we're able to. So yep. just sacrifice a little bit, get that stuff out there, make sure that it's quality stuff and just keep going. We're not the biggest fish out there, obviously. I mean, we look to even bigger people for motivation. We don't compare ourselves to mm -hmm. them, but we look and see what are they doing right? And that's in all avenues of what you're doing, whether it be if you have a YouTube station, look to the people who are successful in the areas that you want to be successful in. 
Don't compare, find how to do what they're doing in your own way. So for us, you know, watching Rally Roots, Daily Refinement, Harry Tornado, Cincinnati Picker, mm -hmm. people who are just excelling in the, their respective fields, follow them and learn from them. But don't say, well, I can't find what they're finding. Well, see what types of places they're sourcing and see what you can find at those types. You know, take pieces and work with that. Also be yourself, you know, whatever you're doing, if it's making YouTube content or resellering or whatever it is, just be yourself, be who you are. Don't try to be someone else. That's like the worst thing because most people will see right through that anyway. So just do the best you can, sacrifice, think about your future, work a few long days. You're gonna be proud of yourself at the end of the day. We'll also mention a couple things you know, we're always tweaking, so there are definitely things we have to work on, that we have to grow, and once we master those, there'll be other areas we're gonna focus on. Mm -hmm. Right now, one thing that's not great for us is, we've talked about it a million times, is the inefficiencies caused by the space that we're working in. That's something that we have to figure out, and then that will be something that's constantly evolving as well as our business changes. So always be prepared to grow and be prepared to change as your business changes and grows. The other thing that's not working for us is that we're not very tight on the categories that we're you know, working in. So we have, we've done a lot of tasks in the past that are a huge waste of time where you really have to think about like, okay, if I sell this thing that I have to launder and take the stains out and deep clean, like we talked about shoes a little bit earlier, I could literally just take two random normal items that are ready to be photographed and listed, get them sold and make the same amount of money in less amount of time. So one thing that we're working on right now is thinking through all the items and categories that we're selling, seeing which ones we can phase out because they take a lot more time than things that don't take a lot of time. And that means the whole process, finding it, cleaning it, testing it, photography, packing it, you know, all of that stuff takes a lot of time and we have to be a lot better at that. So honestly, I think that we're, we're basically at the beginning of our journey. Basically, like, I feel like we started this yesterday. That's the, the mentality that we have on this business is that we don't know it all and we're just trying to do better every single day. But one thing that we do know is that the last five days have been killer. We've sold over $3,500 worth of merchandise. We keep about half of that as cash after all expenses are paid. That to us is amazing. So we're gonna just keep pouring fuel on that fire. With that said, hopefully you found some value in this video. If you did, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. It helps us grow our channel and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.